Hello, I'm Judy Stiles. Thank you for joining us this week on Newsmakers. Well, Missouri Southern State University has many programs serving the community, and today we're finding out a program serving the community in our military. The Show Me Gold program at Missouri Southern helps the National Guard in Missouri. Joining me, I'd like to introduce Staff Sergeant Joseph Dixon, who's Gold Recruiter, and two officer candidates, Mitchell Woolridge and Joshua Turner. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you, Thank you for having us. Uh, perhaps we should start off with a basic definition for our audience when we talk about the Show Me Gold program. How do you answer that question when somebody says, what is that at Missouri? Southern? Well, uh, it's a common question because it's fairly new on campus, uh, but it's an officer producing program for the Missouri Army National Guard. Mm -hmm. um, it's an academic program, takes place right here at MSSU, and uh, students that make it through our program, it is, they'll come out as an officer in the Missouri Army National Guard. Sure. You mentioned it's fairly new. How long has it been here on campus? This is its first full year here on campus. Mm -hmm. So Missouri Southern has chosen uh, to work in collaboration or work together then with the National Guard on this program. Yes, yeah. That's right. I thought we'd talk about the purpose then, officer training, officer leadership. Uh, both of you are involved. Uh, that goal at the end of the program, is that really an incentive to get involved? What people might say, how did you get involved? Oh yeah, it's a, it's a big incentive. When I first joined the military, I was thinking, to, kind of thinking to take the officer route. And I knew I wanted to get college in. And then after I came back from my basic training, the opportunity arose here in my hometown and it kind of just all started to fall into place. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? that yes, happens? definitely. And so tying that together. So I thought we'd talk some time today on this program, talk a little bit about the program, what's involved. You mentioned the academic aspect. So, you know, how that ties into students' goals and what they're doing at Missouri Southern. So a little bit on the structure of the program. Uh, well, the major that they pursue doesn't matter. They can have any major mm -hmm. that they want. Um, they It is worked into their schedule. Uh, their schedule can can be pretty various. Uh, we, we do have class uh, twice, a, twice a week, one day a week we have a lab, and three days a week we work out in the morning. We call it PT, mm -hmm. physical training. So it, it is a lot more on a schedule, but it's definitely worth the outcome as these two will we'll tell you. I'm curious about each of your majors then, your choice of major at Missouri Southern. Uh, I'm actually in the criminal justice department. Okay. Okay. I'm as well. So criminal justice being a major and then you're able to take these courses to uh, supplement and get the military side of the training and helping you in preparing and tying this together. Well, let's talk about the classroom instruction. What type of things would you do in a classroom for officer training? They're learning a lot of the Army basics, mm -hmm. but not only just the basics, but how to lead in those environments. From everything from map reading to um, time management to high, how to deal with individuals in a high stress um, situation mm -hmm. and also room clearing tactical things and then Thursdays uh, during the lab is when they implement those things in a more lifelike scenario so they're taking what they learn in the classroom and applying it to the field so you're in a classroom twice a week basically focusing on these activities mm -hmm. and so forth well give me an example of something that you mentioned previous the basic training in the military how this is taken beyond what you have learned coming out of basic training well we're taking the information that we already have we all have the tactical knowledge and stuff that we get from basic training and a lot of that comes still with time but what we're doing is we're taking that to the next level and we're learning how to lead from the front with that in like Sergeant Nixon said into a stressful situation and we're learning how to sh teach others what we've already learned and take them on to the next level mm -hmm. And what do you see when you hear the word leader? Uh, what stands out in your mind as far as some key qualities that you would you know, like to emulate or see as a leader in the Army? Definitely someone that knows how to take care of uh, their soldiers, making sure that everyone that is in their charge is uh, set up for success. Mm -hmm. So the success of the organization, the success of the uh, ultimately the Army, tying things together. And uh, the leadership laboratories, and the, so the laboratories where you're applying what you're talking about. Give me an example of some of what you might do after you talk on Tuesday and take them to the classroom. Well, um, one of them they've done here on campus is at the old soccer fields. They've, they've taken some of the tactics training, mm -hmm. uh, and they've done paintballing out there. Mm -hmm. So they could apply it in more of a stressful situation with the fear of getting hit with a paintball. Um, then other times when they did the, the land navigation training where they use maps, compasses, and protractors to find, their, find different points on a map, they've been taken to Camp Crowder uh, and kind of given that environment to, to prove their skills. So when you go to Camp Crowder, you're kind of just kind of dropped off in the wilderness and say, find out what's <laughs> going on. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about how that might work on map training. Oh uh, Well, actually what we've done is we actually have done two each semester. We go into what's called a field training exercise, and that's mm -hmm. where we take everything we've learned from each semester and we actually apply it over a weekend's worth of training. And last semester we did the land nav, and they, we went out there, and we, would, we stayed at, in the barracks, and then in the morning, like, morning we would get up, and we would go and we would do the day land nav, and then that night we would go and do night land nav. And then this past semester we went out and we did some more tactical 
combat situations and we did the same thing and we stayed out in the field and we conducted different tactical operations to see how it would be like in a real life situation. Of course, both of you were in the program. Would you say as well that, uh, Joshua, that this teamwork and leadership come together, that you're working as a team on many of these things? Oh, definitely. Um, if you weren't working as a team, uh, we would, it wouldn't work. I mean, it, you really have to rely on the other people in the program to come together and uh, succeed. Well, I know we have some pictures that uh, we have been able to receive, and I thought we'd call up a few of these pictures, and you can talk about what we're seeing. Kind of a, this helps explains for people we can talk about things, but to see what we're talking about. So, the first picture we have here in the field. Tell me what would, might be happening here. Well, this this would be a field training exercise. Um, I wasn't present at one of these. Um, me being the recruiter, I stick around campus quite a bit. But mm -hmm. these guys were were here. Well, what were we guys doing here? I believe this is, um, we were doing a, a ruck march. I think it was our eight mile ruck march. We were uh, with our backpacks and our helmets and all of our gear on and basically we would we'd move out as a, as a squad and we'd just, we'd um, march down the road and go eight miles. Um, this is probably at one of the, I think this is at the finish when we were kind of coming through, coming mm -hmm. together and uh, so yeah. This is kind of the physical endurance part of yes, the training. Yes, <laughs> uh, it's one of those preparations because uh, in our junior year we'll be going to OCS and at OCS it's uh, where we actually get commissioned to become mm -hmm. officers. We'll have to do a 12 mile ruck march so this is a really good practice to get our legs strengthened up and to prepare you for that. Ready to do it. We also have a group photograph. Tell me a little about the group that we're seeing here. This is during one of their trainings. They were able to uh, Every once in a while, we'll wear civilian clothes, mm -hmm. uh, jeans and a polo. Uh, this, is, this is a photograph of uh, the current the group of individuals that we're working with in our program here. So this is kind of the Missouri Southern group currently this year, people who are involved in the program. Yeah. Is the size of the program flexible, or are you only limited to so many spaces? How does that work for what you have? Um, as far as the guidance we have right now, we don't really have a limit. Um, mm -hmm. Right now, we, we're fairly small because we have quite a few students at basic training. Uh, fulfilling that end mm -hmm. of the uh, work requirement. But um, the only thing that's really limiting us is our classroom space. Right now we still have plenty of classroom space to fill. So you can fill up with more people as we go along and people Absolutely. find out. Um, another picture, uh, repelling, yes. Tell me about this aspect of training. Um, this took place during one of our, our class times actually. Uh, instead of sitting in the classroom, we, we got all of our gear together and we went out to uh, Web City, to the fire department. They mm -hmm. let us use their repelling tower. Um, we just uh, went through the, the repelling course. Uh, everybody successfully uh, repelled down, and some of us did it twice, actually. It was, it was a good time. It was a fun day. So it was a learn the proper procedures for doing it and how to do it, and we got out there and try it. And uh, now you're in the water. People are wondering, you're in the water with your uniforms on. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is actually one of the other events that we got to go to. There's, we get this opportunity to go to, we actually just came back this weekend. It's called the German Armed Forces Proficiency Badge. Mm -hmm. And what it is is it's a competition that is taking the Germans basic fitness test and we take it and then we can advance to three different levels. There's gold, silver, and bronze. Mm. And our group actually just came back this past weekend. We all placed a medal. But this is actually one of the events is where you have to swim 100 meters in uniform in four minutes. And then at the end, you got to take your uniform off in the water. And you all got to do it all. You don't have to take it off in four minutes, but you got to do that. And then you got the basic fitness test, which consists of a sprint, a run, and then a chin-up. And then we went and did an eight mile ruck march the next morning. So it was a very physical weekend. It was a very physical weekend. <laughs> and tying that together. And is that's an important aspect <laughs> of the training, is that physical endurance for training physically? Absolutely. If these guys are going to lead troops, they can't be the guy dragging on in the rear. They need to be up ahead and sh showing by example. So, so they need to say, I can do it, you guys can do it too, kind of inspiring the people, the rest of the people in the troops. And now we have another picture. It looks like you're training in a, a situation. Uh, tell me a little bit about this one we might have here. Uh, this was at the FTX uh, this, this semester. Uh, what you have here is a bunch of uh, Connexes. They're set up as a, a mock village. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have paintball guns and paintball masks. And uh, essentially, we're just going through uh, how to clear rooms. Um, there's some other guys, and they're shooting at us with paintballs. And we've got to work as a team and um, basically complete the mission. So people may not realize that there is a specific way to do that. I mean, you are learning those procedures mm -hmm. and the process of who goes in first. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot more that, you know, you have to have sp specific pe ways of telling people what to do. 
Absolutely. And tying that together. So this type of hands-on training, I mean, you could probably read about it in a book and watch a video, but do you feel that really makes a difference when you're act actually out there and doing it? Oh, yeah. There's, there's a difference between knowing your information and actually applying it in a real-life situation because once that stress comes on, everything changes. I mean, you got to be adaptable and you got to be flexible because the situation is going to change, like, in a minute. It can be a completely different situation, but mm -hmm. taking it out to the next field and taking it to the field actually helps out a lot and it lets us learn how to how to lead from the front in those situations. What about the evaluation process perhaps afterwards? You have this exercise, people are shooting paintballs after you do, then gather back afterwards and do a post-event evaluation? Yeah, we call it an AAR, an after action review. Mm -hmm. uh, we always look at the event, what we could do better, what we should sustain, and uh, what went bad. So that way the next training, the next event we can improve. But not only that, they can see their deficiencies. So things that they might, the students might mm -hmm. have thought they were doing correct, we can show where there's room for improvement. But we always, we always review that immediately after the training. So it's constantly learning process. Things you may not have thought about until somebody points it out and says, "Have you thought about doing it this way?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. And tying that together. So uh, let's talk about the student aspect, uh, Sergeant. Uh, when people start, can they start off as a freshman level student, come into Missouri Southern, basically, and work their way through the program that way? What about the academic side of it? Yes, uh, a freshman can enter the program. There are a few different things you have to do to get in the program. It's mm -hmm. not you can't just. Register for right, it. you just go to the register and say, I want to take these classes. Right, right. You have to meet with our professor in military science. Mm -hmm. uh, first off, she has to approve you. To, for her to approve you, you need to be in good standing with the school. You have to be accepted into the school if you're a freshman. You have to maintain a 2.0 GPA. You have to be a member in the uh, Missouri Army National Guard. Okay. And the aptitude test that you have to take at enlistment, the breakdown line scores, there's a general technical score that we look at for our officers because they have to be at a more superior level education-wise. Um, and they have to have a 95 minimum out of a score of a, about 138, hmm. but a minimum mm -hmm. 95 to enter the program. So you have certain specific admission requirements they must have to become a, in, involved in the program. What if someone is already in Southern? They're already an active student. Can they come and still join the program? They would if they came through uh, myself, the recruiter, mm -hmm. and they were able to enlist and pursue basic training. Then they would be able to meet with, with our professor of military science. And again, if she accepts them those, with those same requirements, then yes, they could come in the program. They are required a minimum of two years in our program, though, an absolute minimum. Absolutely. But it does benefit if they do the full four years like, like these mm -hmm. gentlemen here. So you guys will have four years of experience training you, and those courses progress then each year. You'll have different aspects of the course next year when you're taking the classes. Yep, mm -hmm. it just builds on top of itself all the way up to where we go to our, uh, to our school in the summer. Mm -hmm. So, well, tell me about that aspect beyond the college education. You have summer programs then as well? You have to go to camps or school, uh, additional schooling in the summer? Uh, yes, there's a, there's a lot of different opportunities that can arise. One thing we do is called the annual train. It's where we take everything we've learned over the entire year from both semesters and we take it out in the field and we do this kind of the same thing we did in our field training exercise except this is from the whole semester mm -hmm. and we all come together. We actually come together with the whole program and we meet and then we'll conduct three, four or five days out in the field where we'll conduct everything that we've learned over the semester. So kind of a final exam, actual application, yeah. <laughs> if you were to look at it along mm -hmm. the academic terms of doing that and so forth. Well, Sergeant Dixon, people might be wondering, how many other schools in Missouri have this type of program? There's only one other school. Uh, Southeast Missouri has it as mm -hmm. well. Uh, but we're the only two schools in the state that currently have it. It's brand new to the state when it started here, actually. So th those two schools alone have it. So really, you're one of two in the state, but you're benefiting the Missouri National Guard, the whole statewide organization. Absolutely. So this, the students that are accepted into it, along with these two, get the state, you know, Missouri Army National Guard benefits as a student as well. Well, the benefit aspect, people are probably curious. I, we hear about benefits for military, everything from the GI Bill to tuition assistance. Tell mm -hmm. us what that aspect of helping students as they become involved. Uh, it's, it's pretty broad. It's a huge benefit, me being actually on campus here. Uh, we pay back student loans up to $50,000. Well, we'll pay for their school, their tuition for four years, mm -hmm. uh, pay their tuition. We'll pay them for their labs. So that oh. that Thursday they go to, they get paid uh, a monthly paycheck for that lab. And also, as long as they stay in good standing with the school and they're in our program, uh, they'll receive the Montgomery GI Bill. And that'll be between 363 and 563 a month, just all while they're in college. So a lot of financial incentives for joining the program and helping you out. Absolutely. So forth. Well, for each of you in the program, Mitchell and Joshua, I'm curious, people might wonder, how do you juggle this with your other course demands? I mean, a lot of students have those concerns no matter what their major is. Uh, tell us from your perspective as a student, doing this as well as taking your other academic courses. 
Initially, it can be kind of kind of a, a shocker, but it just comes down to your time management. Uh, me personally, I actually work a full time civilian job. I go to school full time, and I'm here full time. So it's just it's it's flexible. But I mean, military comes first, obviously. But then you got to keep up on your academics. But it's 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 doable, and mm -hmm. I've I've haven't had any problems with it. And it every, everybody's willing to work together to all come. Josh, what do you feel that the military sometimes teaches you more about time management? Oh, definitely. Um, being through basic training already and then in the classes that we are taking uh, for the program right now, uh, time management is one of the, the key items that we, we touch on. Um, we couldn't be good leaders without it, so mm -hmm. it, uh, it definitely goes hand in hand. I mean, you learn how to, how to juggle everything at once. So, Sergeant, it sounds like this is something that a lot of students, when they hit school, their first semester, sometimes they get overwhelmed with, how do I handle all of these demands of work and school and so forth? This is one way they really focus on how to handle those things. Yes, yeah, we focus a lot on time management and structure, mm -hmm. absolutely. What about family support? You know, people obviously have families and friends and so forth. They, you know, people are looking for that support for the program as well as you're recruiting people? Sure. We, we do have students that have, that have children. Mm -hmm. um, we work around. We know daycares, you know, only open certain hours. Uh, we're well aware of, uh, you know, babysitting needs. Um, but even, even our dining outs, I mean, families welcome uh, mm -hmm. to our formal stuff, not our training right. events, but, I mean, formal stuff, uh, they're very welcome. When they're at training, they actually, if they're uh, married or have a child, they actually get paid a little bit more money as well to help support that family. So the family support is there as well, carrying through. Absolutely. You mentioned the dining out, which uh, if people have watched the news recently, uh, you had an event in April, which I guess it was full military dress uniform. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about that, what that involved. Uh, that's where we get in our, our nicest looking uniform. Uh, we call them dress blues or ASUs. Uh, we come together, uh, families were invited, uh, the students were able to invite family, girlfriends, wives, children. Mm -hmm. uh, then we had some very high-ranking individuals from Illinois come up. Uh, we also had some veterans there, local veterans. Uh, we, we did awards there, that's where um, my students here, one got a gold, one got a silver medal from the German Armed Forces uh, uh, competition they partook in. Uh, they were awarded for different things. They had they had a fundraiser there, um, and we got to uh, get to know each other and our our families. Mm -hmm. So, what was it like as far as being able to dress in that formal more attire? Uh, it it was. I mean, it definitely felt good. I mean, you're you're up there in front of everybody, and you're in your full thing. You're being recognized for your semester, but then you get to show your family about what you've been doing the whole time, and everybody gets to know a little bit more about you, and they all get to come together and kind of connect with each other. Mm -hmm. And we've heard, you know, over the years about there's certain etiquette and customs and so forth. Is that another way of learning those types of things when you're dressed in the formal uniform? Definitely, definitely. Um, we went through the whole, the whole custom and courtesies of uh, everything from the, uh, the tasting of the meal all the way to the responses. There would be toasts mm -hmm. uh, leading through the beginning and um, everyone had a response to the, the certain toasts. And uh, it, was, it was a really cool experience because when, when we do get our commission, we become leaders We'll be going to our units and we'll be partaking that in the in the bigger, larger scale of the rest of them. So course. you need to have that appreciation before you're out there yeah. to be able to handle that and know what the situations come up and so forth. Um, so it sounds like there's a lot of potential uh, learning process of the histories and the customs, but the application, you're giving them opportunities before they're in the field or in the on the job, perhaps, to learn all these things to anticipate. Yeah, that, that's one of the huge perks to our program is um, there's other ways to become officers, mm -hmm. and I've worked in those other fields. And this one, the program that they started here in the state of Missouri at MSSU, gives them the opportunity to lead, to be part of the customs, be, be part of the events, and experience the, the training and experience some of the leadership before they get to uh, a real-life stressful situation. Mm -hmm. Well, what are each of your particular interests in the military? I mean, the people will say, what do you want to do after graduation as far as, you know, obviously, the officer aspect, but is there, are there certain areas of emphasis that you're looking at? Uh, me personally, I like going into the criminal justice, so the MP side really kind of hits my mind, but mm -hmm. I'm also been, I came in into the aviation side, so going into becoming, further and becoming a pilot, that also, so it's, right now it's up for grabs, which one's going to... So you got a couple of options yeah, to look at. Options. <laughs> How about you? Well... I'm um, looking at maybe law school following MSSU mm -hmm. and doing law in the in the military would be very interesting to me. Uh, also logistics, military intelligence. I mean right now there's a lot of interesting fields that I'm looking at and I'm just kind of moving towards it all open-minded. 
Right. Well, Sergeant Dixon, you find a lot of people that may come into the program, not, they don't, aren't aware of all these different options and paths that can be taken with the military? Yeah, most, most people aren't uh, very well aware of uh, the benefits or the options that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, most people have an idea that was romanticized by movies or books or, or you know, grandparents or uh, family members. Mm -hmm. So uh, most students are pretty surprised. A lot of them are, you know, joyfully deli delighted to hear of, of the great benefits and experiences I think uh, uh, they can receive from our program. They have those options and there's ways that they can proceed to pursue those goals, those personal interests and Absolutely. goals and so forth. Um, you mentioned family and grandparents and so forth. Did either one of you have a family member who was in the military that may have been a major influence on you taking this path? Uh, yes, actually both of my grandfathers were both in. One was a tank commander in the Guard and the other one served in active army. He went over to Vietnam. Okay. How about you? Uh, my father was in the Air Force for six years, mm -hmm. and uh, he got out, but he, he instilled a uh, discipline in me and always encouraged me to go join the military, so yeah. And do you find a lot of this, the family tradition supporting military people? You do. Uh, a lot of people, the, the people that have those backgrounds, a lot of them are more open to the idea of it because mm -hmm. um, their family aren't as in the dark with, with what's really going on right. in the military. So there's more knowledge there. Understanding mm -hmm. and knowledge of what is coming up and mm -hmm. so forth. So we're looking at the program here at Missouri Southern. We're uh, first full year. Um, do you, the next year's cycle, you'll be looking for new students. Obviously, we're record recording this program as you're heading into another academic year. What if someone is interested? How do they pursue that? Uh, if some, someone's interested in a program, uh, they can find me on campus over at the, the Mills Anderson Justice Center, mm -hmm. um, room 144. There's actually footprints on the floor that lead to my office. <laughs> so follow the path. Um, <laughs> yep. Um, you can come talk to me, apply. I will give you uh, approval or disapproval. Mm -hmm. But if you approve, then we'll move forward with the steps we talked about earlier, meeting with the professor of military science and, and seeing if we can make this a viable option for them. And of course, we're talking to uh, three of you, talking to the gentlemen. And what about the young women? Or is this also something open to the females? Absolutely. Our professor of military science is a female mm -hmm. herself. Um, we have two females in the program currently, uh, but there, there's no there's no gender um, discrimination for for officer ranks at all. So they can pursue those so. options either way. Absolutely. What would you say, is, uh, someone were to ask each of you, uh, what do you enjoy most about the program, or the most beneficial since you've been in the program this year? Um, I enjoy the, the application side. I mean, we're getting, it's good to have all the knowledge, but there's there's two different levels. There's there's the training and the education. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, we're taking the education that we, we receive and we're taking it into the field and we're getting the training and learning those skills so that we can effectively lead other soldiers through to complete a complete mission. And that application is something you can't learn just out of a book, like we said. No, you can, it, it's something that, that comes over time with experience. Mm -hmm. And how about you, the most beneficial aspect of the program? I, I have to agree with uh, with Woolridge here. Mm -hmm. um, it's very beneficial to put hands-on to the, the topics that you're learning in the books. And uh, this program is, is definitely um, doing that. So. Well, would you say when you hear the term military science that in this course is that it's, it itself is even evolving? I mean, do you have different approaches to what you may have done five years ago in classrooms and so forth? I mean, the military still has to keep updated and do things. Absolutely. We, we keep changing. Um, there's plenty of policy changes always taking effect. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a big one that just came out here recently with, with tattoos that's, uh, you know, affecting, affecting us in different ways. Uh, but. It, yeah, it's an ever-changing thing. So as we follow technology, as we follow um, customs, and as we follow uh, strength and demand, uh, everything seems to be changing. Mm -hmm. So, but the the core basis of the leadership, though, it remains the same. You mentioned technology. Are you finding that through your training that there are things involved in technology that uh, people may not realize as you're applying this application training and so forth? You know, that is, the technology does play a role in training you as well. Oh, oh yes. There's a lot of different things that we wouldn't be able to do without the different things that we have. There's, it's just we have with the opportunity. It just provides us with a lot more opportunities than what we would normally have if mm -hmm. we were limited. Right. Well, communication being a big aspect today, and we're of course communicating through this television program. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, the communication aspect of the military and the National Guard, uh, people think, well, you're in Joplin, Missouri, and we've got the Missouri Statewide National Guard, and people may not understand the structure of how things are developed within the state. Um, the, the communication, let, you were able to communicate with Jefferson City as kind of the headquarters for the state. Is that how things work for people? Mm -hmm. It is. Um, anybody in any of the Missouri Army National Guard can, can partake in a, in a program like this. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't, 
automatically mean that they're going to be in Missouri or in uh, Joplin, Missouri, once they complete the program. But um, fluidly, mostly through you know computer, email, phones, uh, as it was different back when I enlisted. Uh, but yeah, communication has, has really changed um, even even the jobs that we have available uh, in the communication field mm -hmm. in the National Guard. Right. Well, if we look at this program and going into our second year, are you going to take on next year's classes, the different approach than what you're doing this year? They're going to have new theories, new applications to approach next year. Well, this year we did a little bit uh, of trial and error. Mm -hmm. um, gladly, I can say it, we had a lot of successes. Okay. So we learned a lot from the, our first year here, and uh, we're very excited to, to grow our program exponentially. And you have a process of, you obviously evaluate how the participants in the program, the officer candidates do, or someone evaluating the program here at Missouri Southern on a statewide or national level. As you would. At the dining out, the, uh, the upper echelons that were uh, present during the dining, um, they, yes, they do evaluate our program. Mm -hmm. uh, and we did look good, uh, I'm <laughs> glad to say, because of our, our candidates, uh, especially when they received the awards at the dining out. Mm -hmm. uh, but. I think we're being a very good model, so other schools may take on a program like this in the future here in the state. So would you say that is one of the goals that you would like to have more schools or universities adopt this type of program? I would say I wouldn't so much like the competition <laughs> as I would like uh, our program here to, to grow mm -hmm. and be an example for other states as well to take on a program such as ours. So as we stand now, Missouri Southern is one of two in the state. The opportunities are here, and people want to find out more information. Let's repeat, how do they find you? How do they find out that information? Yeah, they can visit us over at the uh, Mills Anderson Criminal, uh, Justice Center mm -hmm. um, across, uh, across the, the road on uh, over Newman. Newman Road. Right? Yep. Uh, I'm, I'm the room 144. I'm the only recruiter on campus. Uh, I can... My phone number is 417-529-6446. Uh, uh, they can call me and schedule an interview. Right, and you have a link through Missouri Southern's home webpage as well if they want yes, some basic information. We're very easy to find on uh, Missouri's, uh, Missouri Southern's link. Great. All right. Well, I'd like to thank all three of you for being here today and providing this information and wish you all the best of luck in the future and you know, following up as your careers perhaps continue to grow and develop as well. So Thanks. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And I'd like to thank you for joining us this week on Newsmakers. I'm Judy Stiles. Hope you can join me again next week at the same time on this station. We'll see you then.